Welcome to AgriTalk and thank you for joining us uh, this evening. Um, today on this conversation we are talking about agribusiness and why agribusiness is important for every farmer out there. And with me in studio today I'm joined by uh, Bernard Abok, who is the founder of uh, Benok Agri Agriculture. Welcome to the show, uh, Bernard. Thank you. Just tell us a little bit about yourself and what uh, Benok Agriculture does. Yeah, um, thank you so much. My name, as you have said, is Bernard Abok, and um, I work with Benok Agriculture. Um, Benok Agriculture is uh, a consultancy farm, uh, farm which is uh, in uh, agribusiness. We offer end-to-end -end, um, services, that is from production to the market. And um, uh, what we realized uh, before we could get into uh, uh, getting to register Benok Agriculture is that uh, we were before in uh, consultancy farming where we train farmers. We do basically almost everything to help a farmer realize a good produce. But later on, we would get a call that, uh, oh, Mr. Bok, um, my tomatoes are, are, are ready for harvesting. Do you have... The arm of selling, which is Benok Exporters Limited, mm -hmm. uh, which is dealing both locally and uh, with foreign markets. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Bernard, when, when, when we talk about agribusiness, what is it exactly? Um, agribusiness is um, a very uh, wide term. I think most people are using it to replace agriculture. Mm. But uh, agribusiness is just agriculture plus business. So it's just the usual farming, but now um, combined with the business aspect. So we are talking about uh, farming as a business, okay. now agribusiness. Ah, okay. Yes. So every time I, um, I go to my farm, I should be thinking, where will I take this at the end of the season? Or what is it that I'm going to do at the farm? How is it going to bring money to my pocket? Yeah, um, you are right. Um, first, of course, uh, we need to take the outside in approach in farming. Mm -hmm. where we take the needs of the market, bring it back to the farm and produce what the market wants. But you find that most of us are doing our inside out, where we are producing, then push it to the market. Mm -hmm. We don't know whether uh, the market is going to accept it or not. Because we have produced it, we have to, uh, we have to, uh, to, to sell it anyway. And that's where you, you realize that um, most of the time you sell at a price which you didn't uh, anticipate because you produced uh, not for the market but by yourself for a specific reason which might not be known by the market. So um, under agribusiness, first when you are setting out to farm, you need first to know. Uh, for example, those who are I'll, I'll take an example. Those who are doing uh, maize farming, um, you need to know. For example, for me to produce a goro goro of uh, maize. How much am I going to incur for me to produce this? Uh, common scenarios are we, uh, most of the time, we produce, uh, uh, let's say, a kilo of maize at a price or at a cost much higher than the price we shall sell it at a market price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So under agribusiness, we just have to take every cost, every step for it to, make, to, uh, to make that business sense. In other words, if I produce with 10 bob, then I should sell at 12 or at 10.5 or at 11 for me to make business sense of it. Okay. Yeah. I like the way you've used maize as an example because um, every year we've seen these long queues of trucks and lorries and tractors at the NCPB um, uh, depots trying to deliver grain at a particular price most of the time they complain it's not the price they wanted. What do you think has always been our problem, especially when it comes to maize as a country? Because um, this is a country whereby we just grow maize every year. Even now, as we talk, people have, have, have prepared their land to grow maize, but they are not bothered about where it's going to go at the end of the season. Yeah, uh, I would start by addressing your last statement where 
uh, people are preparing, preparing land to, uh, to farm maize, yet they don't know where the maize is going to. Mm. Uh, number one, uh, maize is our staple food. And therefore, whether we know the demand or not, we know that you and I will have to eat at the end right. of the day. Yes. Um, <clears throat> number two, I'll give you an example. Last year, I spent much of the time doing uh, uh, maize farming because I grew up uh, seeing my parents and my grandparents doing maize farming. And uh, I went back to do maize farming uh, as a business. And uh, I realized that I just did uh, four acres. And I realized that uh, any maize farming that is less than uh, uh, five acres or 10 acres is not a business viable. at all, is not viable. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you the amount of money you are spending to produce maize should rather use it to uh, produce something else. Why? Because of the cost of production. Um, last year and, uh, and this year are somehow different because last year, uh, towards the end of the year, the, the cost of fuel was uh, a bit um, uh, bearable. But this year we have seen uh, um, an in, uh, increase in the, in, uh, in the prices of, of fuel. Um, maize farming, I, it's very, very common with us because it is part of what we grew up knowing. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, as I said earlier, it is one of the staple food. And most people are doing it because they cannot do, not that be, they cannot do something else, but they have not been educated enough that instead of doing maize, you can as well do something on relatively smaller piece of land which can generate even 10 times what you are getting from maize. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, let's stick to on maize a little bit, because okay. I'm also interested in, in this where I come from. A lot of people keep growing this maize, and I keep wondering, you have an acre, and you always insist you want to grow maize. Um, isn't that tradition of growing maize our downfall in terms of we cannot look at it as uh, an agribusiness? we are looking at it as it's our moral authority to grow maize every year, to produce ma uh, food, not just for you, but for the community. Yeah, I would say um, farming maize is good, and it is good for our food security. Uh, because um, whether uh, it's good for our food security. Number two, uh, you realize that whether we do farm maize or not, the government will still find a way of getting maize from outside of the borders. Mm -hmm. So um, it goes back to the government policies that are in place. It is not our, uh, our, our undoing per se, but uh, we have also to rope in the government so that maize farming becomes more profitable to the Kenyan farmers. Why would I buy maize, for example, in, in, in our neighboring country, Tanzania, uh, especially at a time when, say, a kilo of maize here in Kenya is going for 45 shillings, and I'll still get it in Tanzania at, at 18 or 20 uh, uh, per kilo. So it goes down to those factors that really um, uh, affect the production of maize. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we have climatic conditions which might not be an issue, especially in certain areas of, uh, of Kenya. But of course, we look at the inp inputs, farm inputs. You've talked about, um, uh, uh, we, we, we are talking about the uh, government subsidized fertilizer. Uh, how subsidized is it? How, uh, okay, for example, it, it's, a, it's supposed to be sold at price X, mm -hmm. but do farmers get it at that price X at the end of the day? In fact, this year, they, they are not even giving it out. The yeah. government did not import uh, that fertilizer in the first place. Yes. So they opened it to market forces, um, business uh, people to import fertilizer and sell it to, to the farmers. So it, the cost of that mm -hmm. and also the seed also is not subsidized and I'm doing less than an acre, or an acre, or even two acres. Does it make economic sense? It doesn't. Uh, before we even go further, um, I'll, I'll, I'll continue to use my scenario. I went to uh, 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 the, the, where we, they collect fertilizer, and I was so much surprised that um, 
the fertilizer which we are supposed to get under subsidy is not there. But there is another set of fertilizer which, which is in store in plenty, but it is not part of government subsidy. So if you miss the government one, they are telling you, you imeisha lakini kuna ingine hapo, which you can also, yeah, you can also get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, they make sure that the, the, the price is, is a little higher, but not that higher compared to the, to the subsidized, um, uh, subsidized one. Now, uh, you know, I was taught always that uh, start something that you can complete. In other words, if I make you get used to something, I should always make it available at all, all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, um, talk about uh, an availability of that subsidized fertilizer. Forget about that. Even the, uh, the, the subsidized one, sometimes you find it way after planting has been done. You need DAP to plant, but you go to the stores, you can't find it. You'll find it three, four weeks after, after planting. Then talk of top dressing. You'll find it way much later, like the uh, last season in our area, we do two seasons. We were to get it early September. Now they were there mid-October. For what purpose will it be? for, especially for that. So uh, this year is not going to be uh, a very good year. We have a prolonged drought in most part of, parts of the country. And again, there is no subsidy in terms of seeds and fertilizer. So basically, Kenyan farmers are on, are on their own. Okay. Yes. I think we need to have that conversation again, especially on uh, the economies of food production. Yes. Uh, what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. Yes, sure. Well, I'll call you back for that one. Let's go back to our topic. Yes. You said agribusiness is a wide field. Yes. So, um, how many types of agribusiness are out there? Uh, there are like a thousand or even more than a thousand mm -hmm. of them. Because when you talk about agribusiness, someone who is just talking seeds is in agribusiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the f seed producers are also in agribusiness. You go to agrovets in towns and wherever, whichever places, they are also part of the agribusiness chain. Mm -hmm. You talk of now the major subsectors in farming, for example, mm -hmm. livestock, you talk of um, aquaculture, you talk of uh, um, uh, uh, horticulture, floriculture, all these are agribusiness. Uh, 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 sector. So you can talk of it until tomorrow, yet you'll still be talking about agribusiness. Someone running Poshomir, Kisiagi, mm -hmm. he is agribusiness because the, he is along that chain. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. I totally agree with you. Whoever is in manufacturing, as long as they are either producing feed, yes. they're in agribusiness. Yes. Okay. So, um, how does agribusiness work? And let's focus on a small scale farm, if uh, possible. Let me, let, me, let me take an example of a crop like onion, mm -hmm. kitungu, and I'll use it uh, to, uh, to, to illustrate how agribusiness works. We started by saying that agribusiness is a, uh, uh, is, um, doing farming as a business. Mm -hmm. In other words, we talk of agriculture and business, which is a relatively or somehow a newer term in our country compared to years before. Um, for me to produce a kilo of onion, I need to take stock. What do I need in terms of land? Is it my own land? Am I leasing it? it? And if I'm leasing it, at how much? So I need to take factor in that cost. I need to factor in the cost of uh, um, uh, what is called the cultural practices, that is uh, land preparation uh, in terms of primary tilling, secondary tilling, and now doing beds. Uh, if you have to do irrigation, etc., all those costs. And now I'll also have to focus and project how much will my produce fetch 
at the end of the, the season. Okay. So um, agribusiness will be a success if my cost of production are less than uh, the market price. For example, uh, I'll use another example in, uh, in Kenya here. Uh, in Kenya, uh, compared to Tanzania, in Kenya, we produce uh, a kilo of onion uh, with around 25 shillings. In Tanzania, it's around eight, between 8 to 15 per kilo. Now, uh, it can only make sense if my, if my, 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 my selling price is higher than the cost of production. Mm -hmm. That is when agribusiness works. Okay. Yeah. Any other thing uh, uh, outside of that is just purely farming for prestige. I have a farm in Isenia. I'll go there with my friends. In, over the weekend, we do nyamas and <laughs> view the kitungus the way they are doing and come back to Nairobi. Okay. Yeah. So let me, uh, let, me, let me take you back on that issue of um, the cost of production in two neighboring countries. Yes. Why do we find ours very high? Well, uh, they call Kenya first world in East Africa, so <laughs> probably <laughs> every, every other coast in, uh, in relation to the three economies, Kenya, of course, has to be higher. Mm -hmm. Kenya has to be, ca uh, to be higher because of uh, reasons we, we, we may not know. We are very ambitious as a country, and therefore even taxes and every other thing are so high. Um, cost of fuel, I think, is uh, affecting everything across the board. Yeah, so okay. look at that. Just use cost of fuel as an example across the three countries, and you'll probably realize why we are the way we are. Okay. Yeah. So what could be some of the advantages for our farmers to learn how to do their farming as an agribusiness? Of course, uh, everyone, every single person, whether employed or unemployed, would want to do business. Why you do go to the bank to borrow money to go and open Kinyozi or Saloon somewhere and um, uh, as opposed to going into, into farming? Now, um, we look at farming as a backbone of our economy. In fact, 25% of, of uh, our GDP is derived from um, from uh, agriculture. Now, um, it's high time all of us uh, adopt agribusiness as a way of, of, of farming moving forward. Because um, I would say I have a farm somewhere, uh, maybe one acre, two acre, but I don't want to uh, do farming. I still go and borrow money or get money or draw my savings to go and open a totally different business elsewhere. So uh, for the advantages of farming, uh, of agribusiness, I don't want to uh, dwell so much on the advantages because there are so many other factors that we need to take into consideration before we can talk of uh, 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 um, enticing people to get into agribusiness. I can tell you there are thousands and thousands of cases outside there of people who are cursing farming. I will never get into farming again mm. in my life. Thousands of them, yeah. Yet agribusiness uh. works. So number one um, advantage is uh, it's a, a familiar field that we can easily get ourselves into, but of course, with the guidance of the experts in the field. I can tell you agribusiness is the only field or the only profession where all other professionals in the world think they are also professionals in farming. <laughs> where a doctor goes to the farm mm -hmm. and he doesn't want to involve an agronomist. But an agronomist cannot go to a, 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 a hospital. hospital to treat someone. But doctors, accountants, all these people, they don't want to involve experts in that. So that familiarity of the field starts with what you know, which is farming. So I would rather get into farming as a business as opposed to 
are going to open maybe um, may, may, maybe a shop somewhere or, or a kinyozi or a saloon somewhere because I have more information about farming compared to these other fields. Mm -hmm. And number two, uh, when we do farming as a, as, as a business, we are going to create jobs around us. We are going to create jobs for so many people. We are talking about so many youths coming out of uh, the learning institutions, but there are no jobs. But if you look at how their fees were paid, they were paid by farming enterprises, enterprises back there in the villages. So if only we can use this, then we can expand the job market that we have uh, in um, and of course, we talk about uh, boosting and, and increasing food security. When you do it as a business, there's that level of efficiency that is achieved. And therefore, what an acre could produce, mm -hmm. when uh, you do it as a business, you can produce like one and a half or two times that. Okay. Yes. Um, thank you very much, uh, Abok. I'm told uh, we should take a short commercial break. Yeah. But then we'll be back and continue this conversation. It's very insightful. And I hope our, few, our, our viewers also at home have, are learning something. Today we are talking about agribusiness and why is it important for you uh, to grow whatever you grow, keeping whatever animals you are keeping. Look at it as a business, not as a, as a hobby. We'll take a short commercial break. When we come back, uh, a book will be telling much, us much more about why is it important to... you looking for a job or do you have a job opening and looking to hire well look no further because all thanks to the standard jobs your search ends here the standard jobs the all-inclusive platform that helps bring together potential employees and employers has a wide pool of talent and opportunities to pick from when it comes to finding what works for you from blue to white collar jobs we've got them all and that's not even the best part for just five shillings per alert we'll notify you of any opportunities coming your way giving you the power to pick what works for you? Usiwa chwenyuma, grow with the standard jobs. Kazi siyo kutafuta kazi? Visit jobs.standardmedia.co.ke and get hired today. For inquiries, call 0719012211 or email jobs at standardmedia.co.ke. The standard jobs. Find what works for you. Value your feedback and welcome any comments, queries or complaints regarding our programs. You can get in touch with us on SMS 22071. Call us on 0719-012-450. You can also send us a letter on our post office box 30080-00100 or deliver it to our offices at Standard Group Center, Mombasa Road, Nairobi. change has greatly impacted and changed our usual ways of farming. Here, we take the responsibility to bring you experts who bring you information and teach you on how to farm in a successful and profitable way. Most farmers now have gotten 
a lot of uh, fresh pedigrees and the 75 percent crosses and in the market they are getting better money up to 200,000 shillings per animal catch get it right every monday to friday at 10 p.m on farmers tv if you're rearing them for meat you can give them chick mash and then no more growers for a, a week and then finish up you, sl you can slaughter them at 49 days that's seven weeks Welcome back to AgriTalk. Uh, today I'm with uh, Bernard Abok, the founder of uh, Benok Agriculture. And today we're talking about agribusiness. Why is it important to do our farming as an agribusiness? Uh, before we went on a break, um, Abok, you're telling us the benefits of farming uh, while knowing where this crop is going to or th where the market is. But um, the last one year has been very difficult for all of us, not just farmers alone, because of the, the COVID pandemic. How do you think that one affected uh, food production and agribusiness around the country? Uh, I would say um, COVID came with uh, its own challenges. At the same time, it brought some blessings. Um, you know, when someone, uh, when you are bereaved, there the, are those people who are also in business. Yeah, so COVID uh, as a pandemic came yeah, yeah, uh, last year in March. Yeah, that is when it was uh, uh, heavy in Kenya. And um, farmers were not that heavily affected because um, you remember the lockdowns and everything. Um, we have the supply chain which was somehow uh, disrupted because of the lockdowns and you need to get clearance from this authority to the other and um, some uh, some farmers opted to sell at a local market because the uh, some of these produce we uh, they produce a uh, perishable cannot wait for the authorities to issue you with that that one created shortage in a lot of many markets in the city for example and therefore for those who are able to get into these markets were able to sell at a relatively higher higher prices so in that sense it was a blessing to uh, to these people who manage but again it was also a challenge to those who are not able to acquire uh, clearances to pass from one, one roadblock to the other until it was very clear that this is um, essential service um, <clears throat> number two, we also talked about um, um, so many countries, you realize that we import a, a lot of our, our, our farm inputs and uh, there were a lot of, uh, 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 that is, um, lockdowns and no uh, transportation from one country to another. That one also made some of the prices, some prices of some farm inputs to a little bit go high because of the scarcity. Uh, again, talk about that. That ripple effect will be realized at the end of the chain, which is the produce in the in the market. Um, COVID at the same time uh, uh, created demand for specific uh, uh, food um, uh, 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 produces. For example, you talk about ginger, you talk about lemon. Um, ideally we never consumed lemon and ginger the way we consume it now because of the demand that were uh, uh, created by COVID itself. Um, there were a lot of challenges, but with time, uh, some other people also predicted that in, uh, by the end of six months, we might have a uh, shortage in food supply. But again, the government uh, moved uh, quickly to address that, and we didn't realize a lot of um, uh, challenges in terms of that. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
a book there's also something you mentioned um the triangle of success uh, is it successful agriculture um please take us through that um from the, you, the way you you put it it sounds like it's the silver bullet <laughs> to agribusiness yeah um farming so many people or kenyans would go to farming because you have piece of land and uh, you have maybe money to buy um like a uh, irrigation system and uh, you forget to take other two factors into consideration where you have uh, logistics and then you have the markets at one point i told you that um, we need to take outside in approach in mm -hmm. farming do your research you don't need to target nairobi market when you are producing uh, 400 kilometers away from nairobi do your research uh, around your place you'll find that there is a specific produce that is coming way far from where you are and it is not produced locally that one will inform your decision on what kind of uh, agribusiness to get yourself into like where i come from uh, eggs come from all the way uh, from uganda or even from theka and um it gets there mm. why can't i rare chicken and produce eggs and sell to the people around my place so when we take outside in approach we'll be having a very easy time in selling our our produce so the uh, the icons in the uh, 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 of this triangle of, uh, of successful farming we talk about production talk about logistics and the market i'll start with production mm -hmm. you may have a very efficient uh, logistical system and a very good market but you don't produce what is best fit for that particular market so you need to take all the factors around production which is starting from the soil the choice of seeds the kind of uh, um, nutritional program you are going to put in place the kind of irrigation or um, sources of water you are going to have and uh, um, of course you are talking about um, uh, the, the harvesting and post harvest uh, handling uh, procedures that you have from there now you talk of log uh, logistics you may have very beautiful products at the farm level there are no roads there are no vehicles to take your produce to the market they'll be just beautiful nothing they're just there but they cannot help you um, now you go to logistics if um, the transportation system is not again efficient uh, for example it might be there but very expensive it, it will only increase the cost of the of the produce or uh, it may increase the cost of the produce yet at the same time the market price is not um, what you are uh, what what these other factors are forcing you to sell at and therefore you are forced to sell at the farm level as opposed to reaching the market because of the inefficiency of the the transport system between you and the market now uh, most people today and even at uh, at the farm level you talk about uh, brokers coming in because they're the ones controlling the this bit of logistics but as a farmer if you have your own logistical system um, we'll also address the issue of uh, of brokers in the markets that we have mm -hmm. but uh, if you create your own market then you realize that uh, you may eliminate this broker at the end of the of the chain i'll give you an example just briefly uh, in 2014 i used to uh, I used to uh, to do a consultancy for some farmers way in in Samburu, and after training them, it was um, uh, it was a three months training. After training them, and now the produce is ready, they called me. Whatever we plan to do with this produce, we have ma more. So, do you have a market for that? <laughs> <laughs> so the the last week I was going for this training. I, we, we, we had a small car uh, that is Nissan Wing Road. And when I got there, uh, 
I found a lot of tomatoes ripe, ready for consumption. And you know where Samburu is and where we are. So I just told them, give me six crates. Uh, I go try. Then if I'm successful, I will, I will come back. I came to Nairobi. At that time, I was in a small, uh, small house, Kabed Sita, on uh, sixth floor. Nikapanda na nyanya yangu nikaeka ndani because I was also not sure of their security outside. To, uh, the following day, I called a few mamambogas. They come and told, oh, this one is too ripe for us. We cannot take it. Now I asked myself, I've, told, I've taken tomatoes from these people. They need me to uh, send them some money. And here I am. I'm stuck with them. I just thought quickly and uh, looked around and I called a uh, Mukokoteni guy. You come. And there was Chelsea playing Arsenal in the evening. So I was also trying to, uh, uh, to, to, to squeeze myself not to go beyond six because I wanted to watch the game. So I told Kyoko, Kyoko, let's go and sell these tomatoes. And Kyoko told me I just need a, a, lit, a little bit of jam starting my, <laughs> my then we, we go. And it started right at the, at, at the gate of the, uh, the oh, apartment. Stay. Yeah, and from that gate we sold 2,000 shillings where, where I stay. Then the, by the time we were at like a, a kilometer away, we had sold four crates. I was left with two. Now when we went to now a stationary place, we cleared at 5.30. I went back to the house, I showered, and I went to watch football with 15,000 shillings in my pocket. Yeah, so that tells you that um, the market is there. You can create it around where you are. If I know you consume it and I consume it, then we form the first layer of the market that mm -hmm. I should be addressing. And I was told that um, that is in school. One cardinal rule, when you are new in farming, produce something that your neighbor can consume. So that when you don't find market in, in Dubai or in, in whichever place, you can sell it to your neighbor. You cannot fail to find a market for tomatoes, for onions, and all this. Then once you understand the dynamics of that, then now you can proceed and produce something that is not consumed in your locality. Okay. Yeah. Now I've addressed the, the, those three issues in brief. That is production, logistics, and market. But market is the is the is the icebreaker in all these three because that is where money is mm -hmm. production you are producing logistics you are getting money getting out of market. your pocket but it's the market that is going to bring money back to your pocket which is very very important okay and i think um maybe next time just uh, uh based your discussion or the topic markets because money the farmers have mm -hmm. they have capital to produce they cannot fail to take it to the to the market when they are sure they are going to get return on their investment okay yeah. um let's go back to those three um, tips of the triangle um let's go back to production mm -hmm. you talked about farmers also taking care of their soils and i i was asking myself when is the last time I even saw my parents testing their soils. So um, doesn't it also start from the farm? Because what you are growing, your soils will determine whether it will actually produce enough or it will produce below average. So how important is the market, is, 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 is production as uh, compared to, to the market? Yeah, land is uh, a primary factor of production, very important. And in farming, now it is the foundation. Um, there are pieces of land that have been tilled since I was born, 35 years ago. They have been literally tilled, and they have never been, I've never seen a time where the piece of land is resting. And again, you'll find they are doing same, same type of crops all the time. Now you've talked about uh, the uh, health status of the soils that we are using to farm. It's very, very important that 
when we think of doing farming as a as agribusiness we also start to think of these other other issues like testing your soil uh, soils also get depleted mm -hmm. just like any other resource that is used continuously um, by testing your soil you'll be trying to look at three things you you'll be trying to look at the nutritional uh, uh, um, status of that soil you'll be trying to look at the pathological aspects and you'll also be trying to look at the structural bit of it but of course um, most of the time we only use topsoil to farm. Now, the nutritional and pathological bit are very, very important because there are crops that are in the same families and um, they harbor similar uh, pests and diseases. But I'll talk about diseases, that's why we test that. Now, if I do, for example, tomatoes and I want to do capsicum uh, the following, the following uh, season, I cannot do that because basically they share diseases and I need to test this soil to ascertain whether they still there's residues of that in the, in the soil. Number two, in terms of uh, nutrition, uh, when you test your soil, of course, you get the results and you'll get to know which kind of nutrients and minerals are missing from that. Now, we just need to go back to reclaiming this, this land. Uh, these parcels of land or our farms. Um, people have gone to a lot of use, usage of um, organic fertilizers, but we have, we have our animals producing, uh, uh, sorry, in organic fertilizers, we have organic ones. Uh, we can use manure to reclaim the parcels of land. Now, when I was doing maize, I took um, uh, some manure to the farm and people are telling me you are, you are doing a lot of work. Why can't you just go to the shop, to, to the shop and shop. buy uh, one, one bag and that's enough. But I told them this one is going to improve the structure of this soil for a very long period of time. And they're the same people who are telling me now, hey, what have you done to harvest this much from your soil? So it's very, very important to do soil test. Mm -hmm. before you do something else. Uh, I see you with the, with the ring on your fingers. When I believe you did wedding, we, before you did that, you were told to go and do some tests. Yes. To ascertain whether you are okay <laughs> for that, <laughs> True. for that journey. Yes. It means that if they were not okay, mm -hmm. you'd not be allowed. True. The same to farming. Go get tes tested, uh, rekebisha, then now proceed when you are very sure because you want to do it as as a business okay yes um talking of the soils there is a friend of mine uh, from another station who did a very good story but the topic uh, she gave to her story was the dying soils so i've always i always sit there and ask myself do soils also die what is your take yeah okay um they die soils die there's life and in the soil yes and uh, yes, there is life. Uh, unless we revive our soils, they will die. And they will continue to deteriorate and, and, um, uh, and, and uh, stop producing at all. Uh, take those examples and even where you are coming from. Uh, before, uh, when our grandparents were, were doing their farming, there were, no, there were no such fertilizers whether government or whichever. They are just farming and mm -hmm. they could get a lot. But with the time, because of repeated production until now, the nutrients are not there. Again, we have toxicated, intoxicated our soils with, uh, with, the, with the fertilizers that we are using. So we are literally uh, killing our soils. I agree with that topic. The so they can, the, we, uh, we've been killing ourselves for a very long time. Yes. Okay. Let me go to the use of technology. How important is it? Uh, how important is technology when it comes to agribusiness? Producing a lot of food in a small space. Yeah. Uh, I'll talk of uh, technology as innovations, and I'll also add something there as diversity. Um, <clears throat> we have talked about dying soils, 
Mm -hmm. And we also have to take into consideration that um, we have increase, increasing population. Our population is increasing. If your dad had one acre and now you have four boys, now you have to divide that. Each will have less than an acre because he also has to maintain some for his use. That means the, uh, the amount of food we could produce in four acres can no longer be, be the same. And therefore we have to think outside the box. How do we make the space that we have efficient? And efficiency here is the number of uses we are going to put into action on this particular piece of land. If I used to do one acre of maize and uh, my needs have, have gone beyond, uh, beyond 40 bags of maize, then I need to find a way of increasing the productivity of the land, but I cannot increase what? The size of the land. Now, uh, innovation, for example, most, I'll use irrigation, for example, uh, most of our, our, our farming practices are based on rain-fed agriculture. Um, we have also uh, global warming, which has caused a lot of unpredictability in the weather patterns that we have. Uh, so many boreholes are being done now. Um, it's high time we, uh, we, we adopt, and even through the government, they can also find policies to uh, enable that small-scale farmer adopt technology in farming. When I produce under irrigation, I can produce any time I want. And therefore, I'll not produce when everyone is producing. I'll, pro I'll do what is called market skimming and match my, my, my season with the season of the market. Um, we are all expecting rains to, be, to come. We are going to start producing. We are targeting one market, all of us producing for this particular market. When the rains are done, we are back to scarcity of specific crops. So when we adopt uh, technology, and especially uh, um, irrigation, we can produce much, and we can produce, um, uh, and we can earn much more returns uh, from a small piece of land. Now, when I go to diversification, uh, in 2013, I visited my friend in uh, Gatundu, and I found this guy on a half uh, an acre piece of land. That is where the homestead is, and that is where he's doing all his, his farming activities. But within that area, the guy is able to make uh, 300,000 per month from different ventures in the same, same piece of land. He has poultry. He has fish ponds, he has a small um, garden for, for vegetables, he has dairy, he has, um, uh, okay, we can call that, um, he has pigs, he has goats, all in the same piece of land. Mm -hmm. Yet someone is having a thousand acres, these are thousand acres, he has a hundred heads of cattle uh, roaming around doing totally nothing. So it's not about the piece of land that you have. It's about how do you think, how efficiently do you use the piece of land to generate more income from, from the same, same piece of land. Land is decreasing, but our needs are always okay. increasing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we all know that farming um, is a devolved function. It is now handled by the, uh, the county government. Agriculture. Where do we, these farmers get this information? All the information you've given us, where can they get it from? It is very unfortunate that the extension system that was there when we were growing up, extension services are no longer there. And that's why I'm telling you, farmers are on their own. They are now left at the hands of uh, non-governmental organizations, which are also, as much as they're improving uh, the capacity of the farmers, they are also exploiting our farmers. They are making farmers to, de uh, to be dependent on them at all the time. So, yes, the government should give this information. Unfortunately, they stopped that long time ago, and farmers are on their own. If you can get that, it's a privilege.
Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you think if we introduce some of these lessons in school, it will go a long way uh, in passing along this information? Uh, very, 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 very correct. I think I, I saw, if I'm not wrong, the reintroduction of 4K Club yes. back to schools. Why do we think of reintroducing it? Because there's when a failure somewhere. There is a failure somewhere. Uh, agriculture is no longer there. Yeah? Yet we are encouraging our people to go into farming uh, to, to, uh, to create even employment for, for the unemployed. Now, <clears throat> go to high school. When you are in high school, agriculture was, um, was left to like wale uh, wanafunzi washamba. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not for, not for the elites from uh, from towns and so. I was in a in a in a town school somewhere, uh, but I didn't do agriculture. But I could <laughs> see that stereotype. I did agriculture, and yes. I was told I was being called mshamba. Yes, a, a stereotype. Uh, um, why do you do agriculture? And if you look at agribusiness, even as a course in. Uh, higher learning institutions, it's a totally new idea. It's a totally new idea. Now, we just have to go back to basics. Agriculture has to be a value taught in us and through our kids from that very basic level. Okay. It has to be start from there. Okay. Yeah. As we wind up, um, what do you think is the future of farming in this country if we don't adopt um, agribusiness? Uh, the future of farming is very, very bright. That one I can tell you. Because uh, just the other time they did uh, census, there were so many uh, Kenyans born in the last 10 years. And it's going to continue. Mm -hmm. It's going to continue. And therefore, population is going to increase. And every single moment you are eating, you are. Uh, uh, <clears throat> we are told to eat like three times in a day. Of course, some go for two, some go for even five times. But you have to eat at least something in a day. So uh, as much as the population is increasing, we also need now to look for innovative ways of making farming to be a successful venture and even to encourage more people to get into, into farming. Young people do not want to get into farming mm. because they associate it with failures and the old. Uh, but they want you to give them money, for example, to do what? To do other businesses. We have to make it a culture uh, uh, for people to understand that this thing has a future. And in fact, it is, all, it is one of the, the sectors that has been projected uh, to be very um, uh, productive in the near future, starting today onwards. If you are not in agri, in agri business, um, yeah, you have to be either in stock or market, uh, money market somewhere, only three areas and real estate. Outside of that, Wachana okay. So we have a very bright future and I encourage everyone, even for those who are doing farming, do not give up. It is a journey. Okay. Just trust the process. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Abok. I think that's the best place to leave it. The future of farming is great, and it is the place to be because the population is growing. Uh, for our viewers back at home, today we are talking about agribusiness. And uh, with me in studio, I was with Bernard Abok, the founder of Benok Agriculture, was really given us insightful information about why is it important for us to do farming as an agribusiness? That is it for today. Until next time, goodbye.